expression of your priorities. Mm -hmm. Your calendar is an expression of your priorities. So when I look at my calendar, which is very colorful because I like to color code, as you know, I like to color code different aspects of my life, my work life, my personal life. I'm able to view in a snapshot of the week and I'm going to look at that and say to myself and then speak with Melinda, hey, does this align with our values currently? Mm. This is what I'm working. This is what I'm doing for the kids. The teal color is the kids. The green stuff is just personal. The yellow is you and me. Like, how does this look visually? Are we allocating time in the right places? And so when somebody says to me like, oh, well, I would really like to work out, but I don't have the time. I, it, it, it's really, you do have the time. You're just choosing to prioritize different things. And I've gotten really crusty. I feel like as I've gotten older around this, like when somebody on my team says, hey, I just ran out of time or I didn't have enough time to do this. What I said, what I say is, let's rephrase that. Let's say I chose to prioritize other things. Because when we use the phrase, I didn't have enough time, we're blaming it on some exogenous factor. Yeah. And that's such a common expression, oh, I didn't have enough time, that normally what we do as leaders is we just say, oh, yeah, I understand. And we ruinously empathize with that remark instead of being more clear and more honest, which is just, I chose to prioritize other things. Okay, great. Now we can have the conversation about, well, what did you choose to prioritize? And were those was that prioritization the proper prioritization? When you knew that you weren't going to be able to accomplish this, did you reach out ahead of time and communicate that to reestablish new expectations? So I know that's a lot that I've just put out there, but I really, these are very deeply ingrained beliefs that continue to, to strengthen as I grow older and um, I guess have, have add more to our litter. Well, I, I love it, man. And, you know, especially I want to dig into this, ca the calendar is an expression of your priorities, because I, I'd like to get into the practicality of planning. And I want to ask you about how you plan your year. Um, and, and, and then how do you reverse engineer that? Like, what does, mm -hmm. even if I were to open up real wide, I'll cast the net and say, all right, how do you plan your calendar and almost let you take it? Cause we could do long-term we can do, you know, mm. I get that there could be an hour long answer to that question, but, yeah. uh, but you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, let, let's just bite off a little, a, a piece of this to say, all right, when you sit down to say, all right, I'm going to look at my calendar, walk us through what that looks like. Is it on the wall? Is it on the desk? Is it on the computer? Do you start with vacations? Do you start with work stuff? Do you start with working out? How do you attack this? Yeah, that's a great question. We could take at least an hour. That would be the equivalent of the workshop that you referenced earlier where right. I did take that amount of time, yeah. right? And still had a lot of follow-up questions and one-on-one -on -one conversations after yeah. that. And, um, yeah, the, I mean, the reality is with the busyness of my life and five young kids, you have to be thoughtful. Otherwise, you're just going to com be completely whipsawed by the amount of activities. And uh, I mean, occasionally now it happens that something comes up on my calendar that I didn't effectively communicate with Melinda. It's very, very rare. But I mean, I know that one of us will be sleeping on the couch that night <laughs> <laughs> invariably. It's just, a bad, it's just bad news. Yeah. It's bad news when when there are surprises. So like mm. generally no surprises. Hey, so where real quick, start? On, yeah, real, yeah, real quick on that note, how do you communicate with her? Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's digging in a little to the micro, which we can totally go there. So I have my own calendar. I have my calendar and outlook. So I mentioned earlier, all the different color coding. Yep. I personally find it very useful to put my personal activities in there as well as my work activity. So it's one integrated mm -hmm. life. I don't have one business calendar and one personal calendar. Mm -hmm, just, mm -hmm. this is the real estate. This is my time. And then Melinda has another one, which if you're watching on the video, you can see this. So I created these sheets for Melinda. And basically it's a, it's an, a legal piece of paper that has different rows on it. Each of them with each of our kids and their activities. 
So you have to find out what type of calendaring system works for you. And ideally we would have one like Google calendar or one calendar that I post to and she posts to, but she's a lot more paper and pen. Yep. So I create the calendars for her and then she's able to with paper and pen map out her day to day and write herself notes on that. And then on a regular basis, typically once a week to, mm, yeah, once a week to once every 10 days, she and I get together and do some calendar management or saying, okay, what's coming up and what evenings am I working and what activities do I have and what do the kids have? And like, what do we need to get a babysitter for? Cause we're at the point right now where we have three of our kids are six and older. So each of them are in certain activities, whether it's soccer, ballet, or a music lesson. And we don't over calendar our kids, but with a lot of kids, we'll have two soccer games at the same time. So how to coordinate that, we, uh, our, our babysitter budget is pretty significant. Mm. Um, I, all right, I'm going to let you get to the question that I asked, but I'm going to, but you keep giving me something to chew on here when you say these things. Can you over calendar? Do you feel that, can you be, can you be overly, have you found yourself being overly rigid, overly planned where it breaks the system where you, maybe I've realized that for myself and the example I'm thinking about is how I've put things in there. It's too rigid and I don't create any space for like life happens, right? Something comes up. You almost need a shit happens, you know, 30 minutes here and there in your calendar because it's going to happen, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that you can over calendar and you just mentioned the sensitivity that you have to that. I think different kids want different things. So I think it's more about being in tune to what your kids want and their needs and trying to match that up. Like I want to support my kids in what they want to do. So if my daughter wants to dance and she really wants to, like if she says it to me one time, I'll say, okay, if she comes back to me another time, Hey, remember I asked you about, okay, now I know that it really matters. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I usually don't give a whole lot of credence to the first time that they ask, but the second time that they come back unsolicited, now I know that they're thinking about it. It's not just, it's not just this loose idea. Like they really want it. So we try to figure out a way to do that. Yep. Okay. And All right. So back to this big picture question of how do you approach your calendar? What does that look like? So you have Outlook. So, right. So I use Outlook primarily. Okay. And at the end of the year, I take one full day. Sometimes mm-hmm. it takes even more. But I take one full day that's just looking at the next year and mapping out the next year. And when I say one full day, I'm talking about eight hours yep. of just calendar work. That's it, nothing else. So it's a very intensive and, uh, and intense process, but I feel so good when I finish that process because I understand the rhythm of the year. Mm. Like each year has a certain rhythm to it. So, so what day is July 4th gonna fall on, for example? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. July 4th is gonna fall on a Friday. Okay, well, that means that I'm probably going to have some people that are going to want to take off Thursday. But if it falls on a Wednesday, the rhythm of that's very different with Jewish holidays. This year, a Jewish holiday is going to fall on a Sunday night and a Monday. Okay, that's very different than if it falls on a Tuesday night and a Wednesday. So every year, the first place that I start is with the holidays. And I have a whole checklist of all the things that I'm putting in my calendar. Mm. So the checklist is secular holidays, Jewish holidays, business trips planned, front row dad's retreats, right? The things that I know that I'm going to say yes to. Then it can also be um, our personal events like my daughter's bat mitzvah is next May. And so like that few days before that and that weekend, those are blocked off. And then different conferences that I'll go to. I'm a part of a study group. So I go to that study group 
I have a couple businesses, so we do summits. And so I'm going to block those times off. And for some of them, what I like to do is I like to use the recurring activity. I think that that's a feature that's underutilized. Mm. So, I, so every year when I show up, that Labor Day will be blocked off in the calendar, right? President's Day will be blocked off in the calendar so that I just need to come and add the things that are not the same year by year. And then what comes after that is getting the kids' school schedules. And Melinda works full-time, so getting her school schedule mapped into my calendar so that I know, oh, this is when my kids have their spring break. Oh, this is when they have their winter break. Oh, this is their last day of school. This is Melinda's last day of school. Right? Like, so it, it's a lot. There's a lot to do here. It really takes a lot of time. But it's a lot better than the alternative, which is like being surprised. Oh, I've already scheduled a whole bunch of meetings for the week that my kids are on spring break. Or I, I scheduled to be out of town at a conference during their spring break. Now I have to undo that. Or like mm. those, that's, those are awful those are awful things to have to do, especially when you've already paid or you've already verbally committed to being in them. And that's like, Hey, Hey dude, I'm sorry. My kids have spring break then. So right. as, we, as we record this, it's September, 2019. What do you yeah. feel that you did well this year? You go back to 2018 with your planning day. Where do you yeah. feel that you've knocked it out of the park? And where do you feel that you learned something valuable this year that you're like, hey, I'm not going to make that mistake again in 2020? <laughs> it's a lot easier. So, so it's a lot easier for me to answer the second question first. Yeah. So I had this idea in my mind because there's a, there's a financial planner in our industry who I look up to named Ron Carson, and he it's extraordinarily successful, one of the most prolific investment advisors in, in our industry's history. And he tells about how he took off the summers when he was a advisor because he had kids and he just didn't want to work over the summer. And I was thinking aspirationally about that, like, wow, that'd be so cool. Um, one day that would be really neat. I'm going to just try this year to take off one month. And so I tried to take off a month this summer and it was, it was not a great experience. So when I was like, where I was at was great. It was, I think it was, I, July 4th weekend, I was away that week. Then I was away a few days the next week. Then I came back. It was well intended, but what I didn't realize is when I, start working with new clients, I have a certain rhythm that I like to get in with them. My, our process, which is a special process that we invented, it really necessitates them, me meeting with them every two to three weeks for the first three to four months. Yeah. And so wh where I messed up is I had a, <laughs> yeah, this is where I messed up. I had a, a lot of great new clients this year. <laughs> Listen to me. Um, but I was doing a lot of plans, like my maximum capacity. And so I just wasn't able to effectively do that. Mm -hmm. So as it turned out, I didn't schedule the whole month off, but how I would do that differently next summer is instead of taking a block like that, I'll probably look at taking one week off every month. Yeah. Cause that might be more effective for my calendar, both on the personal side and the business side. Um, so where I think that I did well, when Melinda goes back to school, there's usually this week of Labor Day where she just needs a lot of extra help because she's acclimating to her school and she has conferences and all sorts of stuff. And so I blocked as a recurring activity in my calendar. I'm home this evening. This is Melinda's difficult week. And then there were some mornings that week when I blocked that off as a recurring activity. Hey, I'm home this week because this is Melinda's difficult week. So I did a good job there. Mm. That's awesome, man.